because we're gonna paint out our hummingbird. Just not a lot of detail because we're gonna be putting glass on top of that. And we're also gonna paint out a little pink flower down at the bottom. Not a lot of detail there either because we're gonna be adding glass to that. So it's gonna be a very basic hummingbird. And uh, this, Michelle, this is an 11 by 14. The big thick ones that I like from Dick Blick and or Michaels. Hey, Cindy. Uh, so here are my colors I have on my palette, and I'm just going to get started because I'm a nervous wreck about it. So I'm going to start with the Viridian, which is that turquoisey color, the teal. And I'm just going to um, start putting some color on him and then just adding a little bit of color here and there as I go. So I'm using this little teeny baby palette knife because I'm scared I'm going to mess him up. <laughs> So I am just going to dip in and kind of start sculpting his cute little head, following my trace line or my sketch line. If you just got here, I did sketch him, pre-sketch with watercolor pencils that I always have on hand for sketching. So I didn't mess him up. I didn't want to get on here and make a bad. Hummingbird. So I'm just going to start adding a little color. He's really tiny and I've got, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got big old bulky dude hands. So um, the little baby palette knives kind of feel awkward in my hands. So I am just going to keep sculpting his cute little head. There we go. And then we'll add some other colors as well trying to decide. I think I'm going to wipe that off and go into the lighter blue, which is the sky, sky blue. And uh, we'll just add and blend a little color here along his belly. Y'all. Okay, so I have to tell you what I did today. I have huge dude hands, seriously. Big, Big fat knuckly hands. So I have to tell you what I did today. I've been up and on the go since 6 a.m. And if anybody knows me personally here, you know that ain't my life. I do not get up at 6 a.m. I am more of a 9, 10 a.m. kind of girl because I don't sleep at night. So I'm gonna flip this a little. Are we, are we the right way? Yes, we are. His head's pointing down. This is the bottom so you can see it the right way, correct? Um, so I don't sleep at night. I'm usually up. I'm going to flip this. It'll just make it easier. I'm usually up all hours of the night um, till 3 a.m. sometimes, sometimes even later. So for me to be up and awake and moving and doing stuff at like 6 a.m. is... Crazy pants, okay? So I've been up, I woke up about 6 a.m. and I thought, well, I might as well just get up and get a move on, start my day because I had so much to do. Just kind of blending in this color along his head. Um, I'm gonna wipe that off and get the cobalt or actually it's phthalo, but it looks like cobalt. Um, so I was super tired today because I mean, I have been on the go non-stop all day today. So I'm just adding in a little more of that darker color. I'm gonna go down here, flip it so I can get his tail just easier. So anywho, I have been on the go since 6 a.m. I just got set I'm getting up out of this bed and I'm gonna get my groove on, get moving. So I got up and started working. I've done a million things today. So around three o'clock, I started dragging my tail, guys. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I was dragging my tail. I'm just scooping up little tiny bits, little teeny tiny bits and putting them, um, thank you for the sprinkles putting them where uh, they need be on these uh, on his little body. So anyway, so about three o'clock, I was like, I am dead. I cannot keep my eyes open another minute. I was sitting on the sofa. I was uh, 
looking at the orders that I needed to fill in the morning, trying to decide <laughs> if I wanted to go ahead and fill them or if I wanted to just chill out for a few minutes and I slack fell asleep on the sofa. I don't know about you guys, but I am not a napper. I do not nap. I crashed and I crashed hard on the sofa. I don't know, four o'clock, around four o'clock. And I woke up at 10 to six around that time in a complete panic. Have you ever done that? Fell, fall asleep and then wake up and really, and it's like, where am I? Uh, what time is it? Is it the next day? I was freaking out. So I was like, oh my Lord, that's why I don't nap. I, I slept almost two hours. So I woke up a little discombobulated. I'm just adding little feather colors. I woke up a little discombobulated, didn't know where I was, who I was, what was going on in my life. And uh, I said, I just gotta get up and get moving. Guys, if you could see how hot and sweaty I am right now, you would die. Sweat is literally running down my face. It's so hot up here, gosh. All right, going back into that Viridian, which is the greeny color, and I'm gonna fill out hit the top of his wing just with that color. And like I said, we're not gonna do a lot of detail to this because we're gonna put glass right over the top. Some of it is clear, some of it is not clear, but for the most part, it's not. I know, you're right, Rima, I'll be up all night tonight. For the most part, it's going to be um, solid. Like I'm gonna be using like stuff like this, these glass chips that are pretty solid colored. So this is just to give us a starting point. I'm gonna a little more of that green. Let's like give him a little belly color. A little bit of the phthalo. Get a little bit of that sky right along where his eye's gonna be. And let's put in his second wing. Oh my gosh, Jerry, I am dying. It is so hot upstairs. Uh, I don't think the AC unit that um, works the upstairs is very good because there are two rooms upstairs. One is my studio room and the other is where I just keep like my canvases and um, like some in the closet, some uh, paints and stuff. And it is hotter than blue blazes. I mean, the air runs constantly and it just doesn't ever feel like it's warm. So you can see, I'm barely getting hardly any paint on here. I'm almost just kind of scratching the color on. Y'all got me all trippy with this bird. Woo! Maybe it is, maybe I need, to, I'm renting, so maybe I need to call the um, people and have them come out and check because let me tell you, it's hotter than blue blazes. Is that a Southern thing, saying hotter than blue blazes? Or do you guys, some of you Northerners, East Coast, West Coasters say that too? Hotter than blue blazes. All right, I'm gonna scoop up a little bit of this sky and give him some more wing feathers on this backside. He is super cute. I'm pleased with him so far. I'm not too terribly panicked about him. So, I think what I do wanna do, even though I know we're gonna put glass on top of him, I'm gonna give you a little close-up look. I am gonna add just a little bit of highlights of um, white and maybe a little black too. So I'm gonna wipe off my little knife. I'm gonna get just a smidgy, just hardly any, if you can see. That's just hardly anything. And just maybe pull in a little bit of white here and there. I can't stand it. I can't not do it. <laughs> just in case some of that shows after we put the glass on. We'll just add a little bit of white here and there. We'll add a little bit to this wing. 
Now we'll dip in a little bit of black. I'm gonna flip this upside down a little. We'll give him a little bit of black uh, on his little belly. Oh my God. It is hotter than seven hells. Y'all, oh my gosh. How many of you guys are Southerners? I mean, it is so hot here. I don't even know what to think. These, if we're all still uh, under house arrest, it's for good reason, because it's too dead gum hot to go outside. So I'm not even gonna put uh, like a line or anything where his little uh, nose is gonna be, because I am gonna cut this. I'm actually gonna cut it right now. I'm gonna cut this with my little nippers. These are wheeled nippers, so I'm just gonna cut and just see what it looks like. So I just pinched it off. So this will be his cute little nose. Look, guys. We'll put a little glue down after we do our flower. That is gonna be his little nose. Oh, it rolled away. <laughs> Hotter than Hades, that's right. So, but look, this, this piece, this little stem is so cool. I have enough for, you know, several more little hummingbird noses if I need them. So, okay, I think I'm done with him. Uh, if I feel like I need to come back and add a little more color, we can do that. Oh, woo, I, I should put my hair up. I'm, I'm gonna have to take a sip. Cheers to you guys. Oh, yeah, in the South, it's not even just that it's hot. It is so humid that you cannot breathe when you're outside. The humidity is so high here that when you walk outside, your glasses fog up, you can't breathe, it's ridiculous. Okay, so this is gonna be our cute little nose. We'll glue him down in a minute. But that is gonna be his cute little nose. I stinking love that. Can you see how cute that is? So I'm gonna move it back over here. I don't wanna lose it. We'll put it up there by the paint. So now we're going to do, oh, Claire, I'm coming to Oregon. <laughs> I am coming, I need my ponytail hat. All my hats are downstairs. I need a ponytail holder or some tape or a cord, a vector cord or something. I don't have anything. Normally I have one around my wrist. I, sweat is literally running down my face. I can't wait for you guys to see when, uh, yeah, I don't leave the house. I'm not leaving the house and wearing a mask. I'm just gonna stay in. Okay, so what we're gonna use for our flower is a couple of pinks, okay? I've got the Master's Touch Light Magenta and the Master's Touch Purple Red. I don't know why that's purple red, because it's not. It's light pink and dark pink. And I still have a little bit of white on my palette, so we're gonna use that too. So I'm just gonna put a tiny dollop. Now guys, I have to tell you that the amount of paint I used on the hummingbird so far is like, look, it's like nothing. Maybe the size of a dime. So I'm gonna put a little bit of both colors on my palette. I already have the white. Uh-oh, that one's not open. Oh, it is straight up murder, ain't it, Lisa? I need to go somewhere cool for a hot minute. That didn't make any sense, did it? Hey, Bob. What you doing? So muggy. Okay, so now I have my two pinks and my white over here. I'm gonna try not to mess that up. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna dip in and start forming some flower petals. And we'll add a little green uh, down here for the stem. And then what we'll do is let this dry overnight. And tomorrow we'll come back and we're gonna add glass I wanna show you what I've kinda put together for the hummingbird's body is this cobalt glass and I have these tiny little feathery looking pieces. And for the, um, for the pink, for the flower, I've just got some little pink snippets. So we're just going to play. Okay, so I'm gonna start with some dark pink on that same size palette knife, just that little bitty baby. Oh, I hear you, Jan. I hear you, girl. 
it's hard to breathe if you if you're regular if you don't have all that health stuff so I'm just gonna start adding in and all I'm doing is loading the back side of my knife and I'm gonna come up to my to my um, canvas and lay it down and just pull it we'll add a little white I think just to throw some color in Go back and forth between our colors. So this is super simple and I'm not going to worry too much about how it looks. I just want to have some petals pulling towards the middle because we are going to add the glass on top of this. So it's not going to matter too much. We won't see a whole lot of this. Mike, I didn't get enough of this, did I? So, just gonna keep pulling. We'll get a little white. I'm gonna turn that just a little. This one's so bad, you guys. I've been panicking all day about doing the silly hummingbird, wondering if I was gonna mess it up. And this isn't so bad at all. That wasn't terrible. I think it was the nap too that threw me. Made it worse. <laughs> Not a napper. Never have been. Lord, if I nap, I would never go to sleep. So just pulling in We'll keep turning, keep pulling in different color, pink, just for variety, because a little bit of that might actually show through, I don't know. All right, got a little hole, so we'll fix that. Come back, there we are. I'm gonna show you that close up, and then we'll add a little stem. So there is, I gotta find the camera, there's our cute, there's our cute little flower. So let's throw a little bit of the chrome oxide green. Uh, I know, Teresa, I feel completely out of sorts. I don't, I feel like, well, number one, I'm mad at myself because I know darn good and well, I'm never gonna go to sleep tonight. And, but I just feel like fuzzy and, you know, out of sorts. So yeah, I can't, I'm not, I'm not very good at napping. <laughs> Patsy loves her naps. All right, so I'm just gonna throw a little bit of green. I'm gonna get a tiny dot on my knife and just kind of give it a little bit of a, what do you call that? The little part where it, the bottom of the flower. And then I'm going to just throw on, we'll add a little white. Give it some variety. And we're gonna make some leaves too, but we're just gonna wait and make those out of glass so that uh, I don't have to worry too much about that. All right, look, I messed that up. Hang on, I'm gonna correct. That's correct. I just wanna get a little. All right, I'm done. Okay, guys. For some reason, suddenly now, the air feels like it's working and I'm starting to cool off. So here is our cute flower, just really simple. We're gonna be using just little uh, pink slivers of glass and I'll show you how I made these tomorrow when we get started. But it's just pink sheet glass, your wheeled nippers and you just nip these off like they're no problem. So we're gonna just lay a bunch of these, stack them up on top of our pink, we're gonna use some of these little, um, t these cobalt glass nuggets to accent our cute little hummingbird body. And I have these long slivers of glass. I don't know if you can see that. We're gonna add to the wings too. Now I get these when I break 
a piece of tempered glass. You'll get the little chunks that you always see that are little squares, but you, all, you also will get these little strips of glass too. So I love those. I always separate them and hold those out. But before we go, where to, what I do with this little nose, we are gonna add a tiny bit of glue and glue his cute little nose on. So let's, I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of glue. We'll stick his cute little nose there. So he, that, ah, no! Where's my tweezers? Oh my goodness, I threw him right in the paint, so that's not cool. Where are my tweezer tweezers? Oh crapola, hang on. I gotta clean that off now. See, I told you I'm discombobulated. That's okay. We'll get it clean. <laughs> oh my lord. I got some water. So <laughs> it's his beak, yes. Sorry. What do I what do I keep saying? His nose? <laughs> I told y'all I'm discombobulated. Hey Kells, how you doing, love bug? Yeah, there's his beak, Carolyn. <laughs> I told y'all I didn't have a brain today. Oh, look. I got my boob in the paint, too. Okay, look how cute that is. Okay, I'm going to work on my cute little um, hummingbird first. And I brought my handy-dandy Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue to the dance because once I get things settled, hey Michelle, once I get things on here and settled, I don't want it to jiggle around. So I'm gonna use a little bit of glue on my hummingbird. So I'm just gonna really just kind of squirt some out. I don't want a ton, but I'm gonna squirt some out and then I'm going to use a brush. I'm just gonna use a paintbrush to spread it out a little bit. So it's just not globbed on. Just want enough to hold my glass still till we resin. So I'm just gonna, I'm just kind of painting the glue on where I know I'm gonna have glass because I already kind of pre-planned. So we're gonna leave his face, his nose and his cute little tail with no glass and we're gonna gla add some glass everywhere else and I think uh, a lot of that background is going to show through. Where'd my top go? I'm crazy. Where, oh, there it is. So that'll show through anyway. Hello, Cindy. Hello, hello. Okay, so I already kind of pulled out some glass. I'm just going to set it right here. So I pulled out a bunch of glass that was the colors that I used in our cute little hummingbird. And I'm just gonna set it right here so you can see both of these. And it's kinda pre-planned so that it wouldn't take four hours to figure it out because it did take me, uh, I hate it too, Jennifer, I hate that when you get things settled and then you just one little bump to the table and it just psh, drives me crazy. So I did kinda pre-plan where I was gonna lay out all my little pieces because it did take me a good amount of time and a lot of going through all my little baubles to uh, get to that decision. So I've already got them kind of pre-planned, but I'm gonna show you each one. Now this one is kind of big, and I don't know if you can see the shape of it, but it's kind of shaped like his little belly here. So that is the piece that we have selected for his little tummy. And that is gonna be so cute. Can you see a little close up? And it has enough clear as well that you can see the color through the glass. And once the resin is, goes over the top, it'll really make it more translucent as well. So I picked two little pieces that are super cool. Look how pretty this one is. Can you see the iridescence? That I'm gonna kind of put on his head but not too far up. I just want to, I want his face to show. So I just am giving him a little glass on his, on the back side of his head. 
Okay, so now I have three little slivers, just little tiny, so you can see how that, how small that is, that I'm gonna use kind of to just start his wingspan. And some of these kind of sit on their side, but that's okay too. Hang on, I got it. See, it wants to move. I gotta get it straight. And then we'll stick this one here. Hang on. Law have mercy. This is why I pre-planned, because imagine the uh, time it would have taken had I not. Okay, so let's see, that's about right. And then I have this little triangle. He is fat and well-fed now, Richard, like most of us. Uh, now I have this little triangle piece that we're gonna use just to accentuate his tail. I think I need a little more glue down there because this piece is kind of concave. Hang on, my glue don't wanna be my friend. Oops. Well, holy mother, hang on. It is pretty glass, isn't it? I just got this glass in from my little glass friend, and it is a slew of beautiful blues. It's all, everything he sent me, uh, just about everything he sent me is blue. So that feels like not, it's not exactly in the same place I had it before. Let me see if I can wiggle things around a little. Let me stand up. Uh, hang on. Let me see if I can manipulate a few things without making too much of a mess. There we go. Okay, I think that works. All right, so I'm going to show you this close up, and you can see that his face is not covered. I've just covered his body with some glass that is similar to um, what we painted. So now we're gonna use some of this fun stuff. I'm gonna pull out these pieces. Hopefully you can see those little slivers of glass that we have. And I'm gonna use these on his cute little wings. So I'm gonna start with Let's just go ahead and start with the big wing, the front wing. And even though this piece of glass is way longer, can you see how it's, it extends past his wing almost an inch or so? I don't care. I like it so much that I'm leaving it extended. That <coughs> Excuse me. I'm leaving it extended. Uh, Laurel, I would use glass no matter what. If you're using... Uh, to, or glue, I'm sorry. If you're using little chunks of glass like this, I would use a little bit of glue just to keep everything uh, steady and so that it, nothing bumps around as you continue to work. Um, so it's just a, a little added bit of security. Okay, um, Joanne, these are slivers from when I, the last time I busted a uh, piece of tempered glass. Uh, some of these slivers came out of that. So I just collected them and you know, you'll get a ton of just cubes like the shattered glass, but you'll also get some slivers like this when you bust it. So I just saved them. Okay, now I think we'll use, I'm trying to decide. I think I'll use, I'm gonna skip that little piece for now. So I wanna, you probably can't see 100% of that because it's clear glass. You really have to see it with your own eyeballs. But that really gives those wings a little something something without, that's a good mantra, Richard. A little something without completely covering them up. So the next thing I'm gonna do is work, I'm gonna come over here to my other little back wing and I'm gonna add a little glass, just some more of those little slivers. I like these too because some of them start will have a curve in them just from how it broke. And so it really makes it interesting. So there. Little, three little pieces. So I'm gonna use this longer piece right here 
in there. And we'll give it one more little piece. So let me show you. And I'll take a picture of this when it's dry and post it really close up so that you can see exactly what that looks like. So he is cool. He is done. He is so cute. Do you have to hone the slivers? I didn't hone any of these slivers, Catherine. I just picked them out. When I broke my piece of uh, tempered glass, I just wore my gloves and scooped up all of the um, like cubes, the shattered parts. And then I picked out all the slivers just with my gloves on, but I didn't hone any of these. They seem to have that same smoothness as you would um, the crushed glass. My goodness, so many questions. Okay, I'm gonna just say this right now because um, I see a lot of questions and I hate when I miss answering a question. If you know anything about me, you know that I'm always gonna answer your question. So if I miss your question, I promise I will come back and answer it after the live is over. Laurel, I do not wait for my glue to dry before I pour the resin. It will be tacked up by the time I finish and by the time we get the resin mixed, but it won't be completely dry. And so I don't worry about it and it has never ever been a problem. So he is super cute and so cute and dimensional. But now let's go on to our flower. So I don't know if you can see that I pre-cut some little pink sheets of glass, little pink um, bits of glass. And I'm gonna show you, I don't have any more pink, but I'm gonna show you really quick using this other plate. I don't wanna get it on my art piece. So this is sheet glass from, you can get this at Hobby Lobby or some other craft stores have it and you can also get this online. So it's just, a, it comes in like a 12 by 12-ish 12 uh, sheet of glass and these are called wheeled nippers, okay? They're glass cutting nippers. And to get these cute little petal shapes, I cut these for, I'm gonna put it here so you can see it. I cut these for flowers, for leaves, fur, hair, all kinds of stuff. And they're so, so simple to make, okay? You wanna start with a jagged edge. So if you have a straight edge, you're gonna wanna go ahead and just cut some little pieces first because the straight edge pieces, um, they, they aren't really great for hair and stuff, but what you can do is come back in and just nip yourself a little hole into it and create yourself just a little leaf shape, but that's all there is to it. You wanna have a, a textured edge and you just go in with your nippers and nip, 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 nip. And you end up with these little pieces that you can use for leaves, hair, flower petals, all kinds of little goodness. So that's how I cut my flower petals, all right? With, and these come from the Hobby Lobby as well. Use your coupons, ladies, use your coupons. So I'm gonna do the same thing using my glue. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to my flower just to make sure that my um, pieces of glass lay down nicely. I'm not really gonna paint this on um, because these pieces that I'm gonna use are kind of flat. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue on each little petal. And now we're just going to start adding our, I'm gonna move this aside. These are some leaves and this little stem we're gonna use, some leaves. And then I'm gonna just start adding in my petals. So I'm just gonna start building petals, and you don't have to cover every square inch of your painted flower. You're just going to start working your little petals in. Okay, you can have any amount of that showing through. Oops, 
flipped it over, but that's okay too. Now this I'm going to put like right here. So I'm not going to worry too much about that center. So I've got all these. You can see I kind of cheated and, you know, laid out my flower as well. Yeah, the, sh the edges you need to hone. After you, um, after you cut these, you need to hone the edges with a honing stone or a knife sharpener, one of those little brick looking knife sharpeners. And I have even like just taken a pile of them and gone outside on the concrete and just rubbed the edges against the concrete and it'll smooth those out really nicely. But you really have to be careful. If you don't hone them, you can have these really sharp points on the end that will just stab the crap out of you. So make sure you take care of that. You don't wanna sell a piece of art that stabs somebody. All right, so I'm just gonna keep adding petals. I don't like that one there, so we're gonna move it aside. Actually, it's this one I think I don't like. Let me pull it out. He's kinda going the wrong direction, I think. There. All right, need a smaller one. So I'm just building up my petals. Oh, I wanna make sure I get my center done before I get to filling in some holes. Let me see. And I do like that my, pet, my uh, glass isn't coming all the way out. We can overlap and just add in as many. You can even stack these if you like. Let me go in and add a few and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Like you could do one layer and then take, you know, let that dry and then come back and then just add a second layer of that same flat pink glass on top and really give that flower some dimension. But I didn't really have any more pink and they didn't have a pink sheet at the Hobbly Lobbly, so I have to make do with what I have. So I got a little something on that piece, oh, paint or something. So there we have our pink flower, and you can see I didn't worry too much about matching my glass to my painted flower, so it does help with the a dimension of that. So you have a nice painted background, and then a nice layer of glass on top of that. Thank you, Connie, very sweet. So now I have a stem that I've cut, and it looks to me like it's a little shy, so I'm gonna wiggle this around a little to make it match. So these are just the little green pieces that I cut, and these are gonna be my leaves. So I am going to just stick a couple of these right here this one might need to go over here he's kind of fat right here and we'll stick one over here too just kind of shove it where you need it <laughs> just shove it so there we have it cute cute can you see him oh, i knocked something over okay so there's our flower there's our hummingbird. And I'm gonna take a brush real quick. Yeah, I could do that, Richard, except really didn't have time. Today has been a crazy day and you can definitely get clear sheet glass and paint it any color you want. But that wasn't on my agenda for the day. So I'm gonna clean up. <laughs> Soap scum off of those. Oh, I'm missing out on a whole conversation, I think. Okay, so now we are getting ready to resin. Now, we don't have a ton of glass here, so I am going to throw caution to the wind. Thank you, Teresa. Thanks for the stars, love. I'm going to throw caution to the wind, and I am going to mix one ounce because I think I can do one ounce with all of this. I'm probably gonna be sorry if it doesn't work out, but if it doesn't, then so be it. We'll just deal. <laughs> so I'm gonna glove up 
And I've already poured a half an ounce of hardener and a half an ounce of resin into my little baby cups down here. Am I missing something? Um, and I use art resin. I don't know if you guys are familiar with art resin. Most of you probably are because you're all you are um, faithful followers. But I use art resin. It's a two-part epoxy, and it's uh, measured by measuring, not by weight. Don't try to do that. So I have total one ounce. Okay, I have a half an ounce. I don't know if I said that wrong a minute ago, but I have a half an ounce of hardener, half an ounce of resin totaling one ounce of resin. So I'm probably gonna be sorry, but I, I don't have anything else to resin because last night I resined a hundred things. And so I was afraid to go over. <laughs> so we're gonna deal with it. We are going to deal. Go Judy. Hey, if it's free, it's for me, right? Free is just in my budget perfectly. So I'm scraping out all the hardener out of this cup and then I'm gonna throw that sucker away. And so we have our hardener and our resin in one cup. So we have to mix this. I think my stick's too big for this baby cup. So I'm gonna lay that aside for one second and get me a baby stick, which is actually a coffee stirrer. And we're gonna mix this. This has to be mixed and stirred for three minutes. So let's count down. Who is my timer today? I did not see Rima. Now I know G's not here. I love free too. So we're gonna mix this for three minutes. So now's a good time to ask a question because I'm, you're gonna have my undivided attention for three minutes while I stir this. And I'm gonna stir nice and slow. I don't wanna whip it and beat it to death like egg whites because that incorporates a lot of air. So we're going to avoid that. We're just gonna slow stir, scrape our sides, scrape our bottom for three minutes. Have I said that enough? Three minutes, don't cheat yourself, to ensure that this resin is mixed properly. So let's just stir. Stir, stir, stir. <laughs> Thank you, Dee. Thank you, love. So we're gonna stir for three minutes. So questions? Anybody have a question about the resin? Thank you, Debbie. Anybody have a question about resin or anything along those lines? Anybody have a question about the Shattered Circle, about our membership, about anything I can uh, answer for you right now while we stir? This is our Q&A time. <laughs> Q and A, three minute Q and A. Uh, they're laying flat on their, um, they're laying flat, not on their sides. Yeah, so I just nipped them with uh, the wheeled nippers and lay them flat. Now you can layer them, Jennifer. You can lay them flat, do one layer, and then come back and add another layer to fill in any joints and holes. Um, to add more dimension, <laughs> to add more dimension if you want, uh, if you want that effect. Look at you guys, thank you so much for the stars. You know, it took me a long time to figure out what that is, so um, I do appreciate you guys. And Richard, you're about to get a spanking. <laughs> so, um, can you give me an overview of the membership? Absolutely, Laurel. Our membership is a monthly membership. It's a paid monthly membership. It's $37 a month, and inside the membership, we do a minimum of two workshops a month, start to finish. They are videoed, pre-recorded videos, step-by-step, -step, start to finish, as well as a PDF instructional, So because people learn different, so we have uh, videos as well as a document you can read with pictures. Um, so we do big art. Uh, we do, we, we just did a mermaid. She was super cute. We also um, have a monthly Q&A. There are lots of resource videos, how to cut glass, how to tint glass, 
how to do pretty much anything uh, needed to create a piece of glass art within our membership. So uh, that is a good overview, but if you have any questions, love, you just send me a PM and I will answer any other questions you have. Let's see. <laughs> Ship a 10 by 20. Uh, get a box that will give you at least four inches all the way around. I use um, bubble wrap first, then cardboard, and then bubble wrap again. Mark it fragile. And I ship anything, over, anything that can't fit in a USPS box, I ship FedEx. Yes, if you pre, if you cut, if you um, shatter your own tempered glass, you need to tumble it to get the edges off. Uh, let's see. Did I use a hammer? Uh, you know what, Joanne? When you when you pop the tempered glass, what I did was just pop it with a hammer and a screwdriver. You get what you get. You get some. Shattered, you get some of the skinny pieces, so you pretty much get what you get. Sandy, the Azuria is on back order perpetually. Uh, I'm wondering if that was something that the my um, manufacturer was getting from China because I haven't seen it and I have no idea when it's ever going to come back in. But I promise you, when it does, I will. You will be the first to know. Any glass use for get our strings for sale. Carol, I may have some. Send me a PM when we're done here, and I will check and see if I have any guitar strings. Let's see. <laughs> Richard's being so bad. Uh. Thank you, Inga, for helping answer questions. Stop. <laughs> I got stop. Okay. <laughs> It's okay if you go over a few minutes. We have time. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I am going to work up here at the top and then towards myself, and I'm going to cover my glass first. So I'm just going to drizzle my resin with my stick so I can control how much resin I'm using. I'm going to drizzle it right on top of all those glass bits. That'll, it'll hit the top of the glass, and then it'll uh, run through the middle of the pieces, run down the sides, and cover it and adhere it to our canvas really nicely. Oh, Inga, that is fantastical. Yes, let's talk about that. So I'm going to cover all my glass first. Make sure it's nice and covered. So there's our hummingbird. I want to make sure he's nicely saturated. And then I'm going to come down here and we'll do the same thing with our flower. I want to get all those pieces covered really well so that none of them are loose. I think we may have enough. It may be kind of skippy in the sky, but we'll, we'll work it out. So I want to cover all my glass pieces so that everything is adhered nicely to our canvas. And then I'm going to spread this out a little and make sure that it's covered. Woo, give me a sec. And then what I'm gonna do is just dump the rest. And it's probably not gonna be enough, but that's okay. We're gonna make do with what we have. I'll, I'll pour some more when we're off. I should have done a little more than this, but that's okay. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and throw this away. And now what I'm going to do is just use my fingers to carefully spread the resin on the rest of the canvas. We may, we may have enough. It'll be thin. I'm going to do a thin coat. 
Just spread it thinly. I'm gonna turn this a little bit. I do not have my uh, blocks underneath because they're all under other things, but I promise I'll show you that before we get off here to remind you of the, what needs to happen. But um, I should have done that before, but I didn't. So yeah, when you're doing resin, you want to uh, protect your surface, protect your work surface so that if you get resin on your work surface, it goes on to a plastic bag or a tarp or something along those lines. So don't work on your kitchen table unprotected because if you get resin on your kitchen table, then forever you're gonna have resin on your kitchen table, okay? So what I like to do is, if I'm working somewhere besides my studio, I will put down, woohoo, I will put down plastic first, and then I will put down paper. The paper will absorb the resin. I'm gonna have to get something to get down in those holes. The paper will absorb the resin, and the plastic will protect your work surface. Now the other thing you need to do, I'm gonna have to get a brush, hang on. I'm gonna take these gloves off real quick. So I don't wanna get uh, resin everywhere. And let's see, this is an 11 by 14. I'm gonna take my gloves off and I'll show you what I mean when I say elevate, because what you need to do is make sure your canvas is elevated as well. So what I like to do is use wood blocks. So you can use like a cut up two by four or whatever. So I'm gonna take these wood blocks and I'm gonna set them under each end of my canvas to elevate it off my table so that if any resin just so happens to drip over the edges, you can um, you lift it off anyway because it's just gonna drip on your covering, on your paper or your plastic or whatever is on your table. So let me get a small something. Ooh, I need to get down into between that glass. I'm gonna have to waste a brush. So I need to find just the right one to waste because I'll have to throw it away after this. So I'm just going to use this brush to get between some of these little pieces to make sure I have resin in there. Because I want it to be covered really nicely, especially around this flower. I don't want to have any skippies because this is what holds the glass on. So I'm gonna make sure I get down in there and everything is covered nicely. I see a couple of cracks. Let me see. It's just sitting on top of the glass instead of rolling off, seems like. All right. So now our canvas is elevated off our work surface so that our can so that our art doesn't stick to our table if we have resin off the sides. And we're ready. So the last thing we have to do is make fire. So because we mixed a two-part resin, we incorporate bubbles in the mixing. So we're gonna use just a small little blowtorch, <laughs> propane torch, you can use a kitchen torch, you can use a heat gun, whatever you're comfortable with. And we are just going to hit the top of this with um, this flame. You don't want the flame to touch the canvas. You want to keep your flame off your canvas. It's the heat that pops the bubbles that uh, you got on your canvas from mixing. It's the heat that pops the bubbles, not the fire. So keep your hand moving at all times. Keep the flame moving and keep the flame off of your canvas because if you burn the resin, you can burn it from holding the fire too long to it, and then it'll make a funny yellow spot. So I see a little piece of debris because my air conditioner is on. Normally I wouldn't do that, but it was hotter than freaking blue blazes in here yesterday. 
so it's spitting a little fuzz. I can't get it up. Hang on. It wants to be stuck. Get off. I think I got it. Hang on. So what I like to do before I'm done is just kind of eyeball my piece, make sure I don't have any icky like brush hairs or little spots of dust or debris in my art piece before I leave it to dry. Now this will need to dry overnight, so make sure that you're working in an area where you can leave this unattended, no little baby hands, no little puppy dogs, no little kitty cats, to, that will be uh, getting into your resin because it's gonna take about 12 hours for this to dry properly, 72 hours to cure, but in about 12 hours, you'll be able to touch it. So voila, look how cute. Look at that cute little hummingbird. I am so excited about him. He is so stinking cute, isn't he?